sometimes it can seem like someone will step into a new opportunity, they'll start a new business, they'll go into a new job, and they'll just immediately take off. Why are some people blessed? As soon as they touch something, it just skyrockets. Like they see success immediately. They're sowing on ground that's already been tilled, that's already been prepped. Yeah. The ground, the soil is fertile. Nothing at all. Nothing is impossible for my God. Nothing at all. Nothing is impossible for my God. Impossible. Nothing, Nothing at all. all. Why am I actually trying to sing my hardest? <clears throat> now that our voices are warmed up. Gotta warm that throat up, huh, girl? <laughs> we apologize in advance to whoever is going to be editing this. Today, so, yeah. we are talking about you are not starting from scratch. You are sowing on fertile ground. Come on. The topic actually came up because Elijah and I were having another a conversation. conversation. <laughs> uh, pretty much. That's, that's, the theme. Our <laughs> that's the theme of this podcast. If you log if you log on and you watch an episode, it's probably going to be from a conversation we had off camera first. Yes. And basically, I was talking to him about this podcast and I was telling him, oh, my gosh, I just feel like we're starting from scratch and it's going to take so long for it to grow. In regards and to what? I was just talking about in terms of growth, like I Growing felt like, the podcast, right? Yeah, the podcast. Yeah. Like I was just essentially saying, I feel like it's going to take so long for the podcast to reach a lot of people and for it to gain a lot of visibility. I feel like we're starting from scratch because, you know, even though we had a podcast, well, we've ha had this podcast since 2019. We've mm -hmm. never been really faithful with it. Yeah. So I was just basically telling him my fears concerning like jumping back in. And he was saying to me, he was like, you're not starting from scratch. You're actually sowing in fertile ground. And that was so good. So we actually felt like it was good to talk to you guys about that because that yeah. was such a shift in perspective for me. When he said that to me, what he was referring to was the fact that since 2019, I have actually grown an audience. So now mm -hmm. I have an audience close that I can leverage. K. Let's go. I have actually 89K. I don't know why he's saying 100K. Right, close that's, 100K. that's not very far off. Well, yeah, I have an audience that I never had when we first initially started the podcast in 2019. And he was saying, you have a wealth of knowledge, you know, mm -hmm. like you've grown so it. much. You have life experiences. Yeah. You have so much more mm -hmm. than you did back then. Try to get that mind. That Try you'll that be. brain. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Elijah's delirious and we're tired. <laughs> this is clearly the last podcast of the day. But. He essentially was saying you have life experiences and so much that you can be able to pour out from to others. And that is why you're not starting from scratch. So he had given me those two major examples that I thought were so good. And he's actually right. A lot of times we think we're embarking on a new opportunity and it's going to take so long to hit our goals. When in reality, all of that time has actually been used for your good. Mm -hmm. And it has actually been used for you to gain more leverage so that things can move quicker. Yeah. So him saying that was really impactful and really, really great. And I'm so glad he said that. Yeah, so the the term that pops up in my mind as you were talking was compound interest. Uh, and so- Come on, big word daddy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, uh, why would you so many- unhinged. <laughs> This is gonna be an unhinged this episode. This is an unhinged episode. <laughs> We're we so might tired. we might need to pause the camera real quick. <laughs> Your hand or something. But, uh, <laughs> so yeah, That's compound funny. interest pops up to, in my mind, um, and it's like for every experience, every job that we've been on, every opportunity that we've uh, embarked upon, tried. It's like we've made an investment, whether it be financial investment, whether it be an investment in our education, in our skills. Like you make some type of investment. Time is an investment. Money is an investment. All of those things, right? And so it's like regardless of of the outcome of the situation being like what you wanted or not what you wanted being it, calling it whether you're going to call it a success or a failure you still gain something from it That's you gain so skills you gain experience you gain knowledge you gain wisdom right and so i think though all of those things that you gain successes or failures right regardless of whether what the outcome is um begins to compound over time begins yeah. to multiply exponentially over time and as you go into new ventures as you go into new opportunities you can pull from that bank that you've been growing throughout your life how i've experienced that in my life was when i started gifted hands my music school like i started a youtube channel uh, that was kind of like how i built an audience first and i think within the first year i got to was it ten thousand subscribers something within the first year guys when i tell you let me tell you a quick a quick little story okay 
when this man came to me because i had been on youtube at that seven point years for like a long time Six, like we're not years, even gonna yeah. get into the time <laughs> of how long he actually had said to me at that time this was back in 2019 he was like yo i'm gonna start a youtube channel and i want to hit 10,000 subscribers in the first year i was like you know that meme you know that meme of the white guy he's like put it up <laughs> and i remember him saying that and it wasn't that i wanted to speak fear and doubt into his plans it was really just because I had this experience you of experience. struggling <laughs> on YouTube. So I was just saying to him, I thought I was like giving him wisdom. I was like, you know, babe. You might want to set realistic just expectations. Just set realistic expectations. I know you can do anything, but like 10,000 subscribers in the first year, you know, that's a lot. YouTube is just a channel that sometimes is the long game. You have to play the long game, but you know, I definitely shoot high, but I just want you to manage your expectations just in case. Yep. This man blew that goal right out the water. I was like, granted though, I mean, I did get to like I think the five or six month mark after starting the channel, and I set the goal for ten thousand a year. And then we were five six months in, and I was at like six hundred subscribers. Yeah. And so there, I mean, there were points where I was like, Ugh, I don't know if we're gonna get there. But and then from six months to a year, it went from like five six hundred to ten thousand. Yeah, it was like exponential <laughs> growth. Yeah. And I think that it was so good because you were actually sowing in fertile ground. Yeah, and so like kind of back to the point that we were making, was that like from the outside looking in, you just may be like, man, this dude started a YouTube channel, started online teaching music, and it just blew up when like, that's not the whole story. That is a part of the story. But the full story is that, or a part of the full story is that I had been playing piano since I was two or three years old. Yeah. I've been playing in church which because I teach gospel music, right? I've been playing in church since I was like five or six. Classically trained, right? Grew up doing competitions, like literally traveling the US, uh, participating in different competitions and performances. Um, I went to performing arts high school for a couple years in high school, right? I taught, I started teaching piano lessons in high school. Yeah. Like I was driving around in high school, um, teaching, teaching little kids, I was getting students in my neighborhood, going, knocking on doors. So I had already been teaching for seven, eight years, probably longer than that, close to, yeah, like eight, nine years. And then even when I started the YouTube channel, I was, we were in Toronto, we were in Canada, and I was driving around the city, like going to people's houses. And the only reason why I started the YouTube channel was because like we were doing some numbers. And I was like, man, even if I'm working like six days a week, I got 40, 50 students, I'm only gonna make like 60, 70K a year. Yeah. And I was like, that ain't enough, especially for the amount of work that I would be doing. Um, so it was like it, everything that I did online with the music school was things that I already had experience doing in real life. Right. So it was just transferring those skills from one medium to another medium. And now, granted, there were some new things that I had to figure out, like the technology. I had never recorded video like that. So I was brand new to videography, YouTube. Like I had never posted. I don't think I hadn't really posted no videos on YouTube like that. Maybe some covers or something of me singing. But yeah. that was really it. So there were some new skills that had to be learned, that took time. And I mean, even like now I'm four years in and I think I'm still learning plenty of things when it comes to the content creation process, but also I can leverage other people like who are way better than me when it comes to uh, recording videos, editing, when it comes to ideation, all those things, right? Yeah. <clears throat> but the ground was fertile because I already had experience and skills in those areas and all of those things in totality kind of set the environment to succeed later on in life. Yeah. <clears throat> and I think this is why it's so important to make the most out of every season that we're in. Yeah. Because when you do that, you're able to actually steward your relationships well. You see the value in it because you <laughs> never know if you'll need someone in the seasons to come, how somebody can come and bless your life, how you can bless somebody else's mm -hmm. life, how they can be maybe a stepping stool or just a very- Just just step on them. Just <laughs> no, that's not what I meant. I mean like a stepping no, stool in a good way, right, you know, right. like somebody that you can partner with and work together mm -hmm. with in the next season or whatever to help hit your goals quicker, you know? So yeah, I think 100%. it's just really important that you're constantly stewarding your relationships in the season you're in. It's important that you're constantly honing your gift. Yeah. A lot of times like we'll be in a current season and we might not see the value of getting better at our craft because of where we're currently at. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, well, I'm good for where I'm at or I'm even great for where I'm at. That shouldn't be what determines if you choose to get better or not.
Yeah. What determines if you choose to get better or not should be actually just your own personal desire mm -hmm. for excellence and greatness. Yeah. And I think that if in the season you're in, you're constantly honing your gift, constantly getting better at your craft, then in the oh, next boys. season to come, you'll be ready, you know, <laughs> yeah. and you'll be able to sow into fertile ground knowing, wait, I'm actually already five steps ahead, mm -hmm. you know, so th that's important. Yeah. And, and to, to add on to what you're saying, if you have a choice, I think it's better to be a person who is bigger than the position you're in and then to get elevated to a position that you're qualified for rather than being a person who's at a position you're trying to get elevated or you do get elevated and then you're not qualified for the new place that you're at. Mm, come on. And then you get knocked right back down because you didn't do the prep work in advance. That's so good. So I think like whether you have big dreams, goals and aspirations or not, it's like constantly prepare yourself for what's to come. That's and like so what's coming good. in the future. What's another way people can make the most out of the season they're in? Steward the people around you well, um, like never overlooking people or um, like discounting people. Treat them with care, with respect, Yeah. regardless of what like, level they're at in comparison to you. Because like you never know where someone's going to be in the future. Right. You know, and someone that may be working under you may be an equal or maybe above you one day, you know? Yeah, that's true. <clears> and <throat> so, I, I've seen the tables turn for sure. Yeah, exactly. I think one thing that's really important when it comes to stewarding relationships as well is in every relationship dynamic, try to provide value. Yeah. I try my hardest to not ask anybody for anything. Like if I meet someone, the very first thing that I'm gonna see if I can do is help them, right? And if you start by giving and that dynamic comes from a giving place, then, you know, great, you can make withdrawals in the future if necessary, or you're just known as someone who's super helpful and who doesn't wanna be around someone who's willing to give, Yeah, you know, who's a generous person. You never know when another door is gonna open. Right. You don't know what situations you're gonna walk into. So don't ever get satisfied with where you're at. Yeah. I think it's good to celebrate where you're at and it's good to celebrate milestones and achievements Take time to do that, but and then after you've done that, figure out what's the next thing. Steward opportunities with preparation. That's so good. And definitely take advantage of the opportunities that are available to you in that season, you know, because yeah. you just never know what lies behind a door. And for a lot of people, some folks are just scared to do something. Right. They're scared to just pull the trigger, you know, or just like be courageous and, and do anything. Right. You know, it's like if especially if you have a calling, you are feeling like God is leading you to do something. If especially if it's something new, fear can play a huge role in that. Yeah. But like pushing past your fear and being brave, being courageous in doing the thing. Yeah, that's so good. I'll also say stop looking at opportunities from a place of pessimism and having this negative outlook. If you look at every opportunity from a place of, wait, I actually have skills that can benefit me in this new opportunity, or I actually have this leverage or this relationship that can help benefit me in this new opportunity, you will stop seeing new opportunities from a place of, oh my goodness, I'm starting from scratch, I'm starting all over. Mm -hmm. You'll actually be looking for the ways that you've used things in the past as building blocks to help this opportunity be so much more in a shorter period of time. Yeah. The other point I want to make as well is that, okay, let's say that there's somebody that basically is going into this new opportunity. So let's say in the past they were a cake decorator. Okay. Okay. Come on, cake. And they're feeling called to play the piano. And that's somebody that's taking that big jump, they might actually feel like, bro, there's no transferable skills. Everything is truly me starting from scratch and I don't have anything that can help me move quicker in this scenario. Mm -hmm. If God is calling you to it, then it's your obedience that will cause God to shift the circumstances in your favor yeah. and create fertile ground. Like God can cause it to rain, you know, God can cause the sun to shine and make that soil fertile so mm -hmm. that that seed can bear fruit. And I really love that because, yeah, you know what? There are going to be instances where God is calling us into something that we feel that we have no experience in. But 
if he's calling you to it, then it will be fruitful in his time because it's your obedience that is going to reap the rewards and bear fruit. With this analogy, it makes me think of an actual farmer. And if you have, you own farmland, there's two things that are required for you to really reap an excellent harvest. Mm -hmm. I think one thing is environmental. If I own the land and I have the seeds to plant, but we're in the midst of a drought, hmm. there's no amount of work that I can do. There's no amount of tilling the land, things that you can do as a farmer to prepare the soil for the seed, right? But there's also environmental circumstances and situations where it's like, no matter how hard you work, your labor will not be fruitful. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where like the God piece comes in Yeah, is sometimes God just has to work a miracle, mm -hmm. right? He has to set the environment. He has to cause the rain. He has to cause the sun to shine. Like he has to cause the storms to cease, whatever it might be. Like there are certain environmental situations where it's like, if these factors are not right, then I will not be able to, to reap a harvest, right? Yeah. But then at the same time, on the opposite end of the spectrum, the weather could be perfect. The environment could be perfect, right? But if you have not done the work on your side, if you don't plant the seeds, if you don't prepare the land for the seeds, if you don't go out there and nurture the seeds after they've sprouted out of the ground, all there's steps throughout the whole process that we have to participate in, right? And if we don't do that, then we also won't see harvest. Yeah, that's so, so it takes true. Both. Yeah, that actually reminds me of the scripture um, in Ecclesiastes that says a farmer that waits for perfect weather never plants. Yeah. You cannot wait for perfect weather. You cannot wish to have the perfect circumstances because at the end of the day, if you do the work and you have the faith, God will partner with you and he'll create those circumstances. Mm -hmm. And honestly, you'll be surprised what can come from partnering with God, even in circumstances that seem not perfect at all. We do serve a God that can turn things around in our favor and make things fruitful that don't seem like they're going to be fruitful. You yeah, know, 100%. so it was even encouraging to me when me and Elijah had this conversation. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping that it encourages you guys so that you see and recognize that if you're starting something new, there's always opportunities to see it from the perspective of glass half full instead of glass half empty. Yeah, that's good. Uh, one more question. How would this be applicable? Like, let's just think about a couple groups of people or different situations and circumstances, right? So let's say someone's working corporate because um, you use the the example of the cake baker. Yeah. But what if someone's working a corporate job and they feel like they have to switch sectors completely or maybe they feel like, man, maybe I think I need to go back to school and do something different. Mm -hmm. And so it's like I'm in finance and accounting or something, but I'm going to go back to school for something else and start down a completely different path. Like how do they use this idea of you're sewing on fertile ground? That's a really good question. I think that that person could take the time to assess and mm -hmm. actually take a look at their natural gifts, talents, and abilities. I think it would be good for them to actually see and analyze, these are my skills, this is what I'm good at, um, this is where I'm feeling called. And I think just putting all of those things together, like this is my personality, this is how I'm wired, so that they're actually putting themselves in a position where they're not starting from scratch. Yeah. Because I think mm -hmm. that if all of those things are working together, then there is still some building blocks that you're standing on. It's like you give yourself more likelihood of succeeding. Exactly. Like, you know. Whereas if you are starting truly from scratch with something that you have zero skills in and anything like that, then chances are higher that you might fail or not even higher that you might fail. I think chances are just higher that you might not see the success and growth that you want to see in the time you want to see it. Oh, yeah. I think that you yeah. most likely will see the success if you're really patient. I'll also say this. I don't even know. I don't, I don't know if I agree with that. Well, because I'm, I feel like I'm also talking to people, I guess in my mindset that do have a faith background. And I think I'm, thinking about those people because I'm like, God is not calling you to something that you're going to fail in. I mean, this may be another conversation for another day, <laughs> but are people really following the direction that God's called them to? Are people just moving the way they want to move or, or looking at the opportunities that are surrounding them? They just pick in a random direction. I mean, yes, I think so. But I guess I'm, I'm talking from my worldview and my worldview is that 
having a relationship with God is important because yeah. then you can rely on him and he can be the one that's leading you. Yep. And the Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah. All of that. Your success is actually tied to your obedience. So yes, do all of those practical things we're telling you. You know, assess, look at your skills, gifts, talents, and abilities and but all your, that your stuff. Your navigation system is internal. It's the Holy Spirit. It's praying. It's talking with God, running everything by him to figure out what direction, where should I even be looking? Right. God is your strategic advantage. I just believe that, you know, Come on. and also going back to what I said, because I still stand 10 toes down on this earlier on in the podcast is that okay. even if there are no practical things that you can rely on mm -hmm. at the end of the day, if you have God, my, my, my. he is the one that can Glory. work everything out in your favor Yeah. in time. Glory. Glory. <laughs> Why did you sound like a chicken? <laughs> Glory. <laughs> ah, hallelujah. so yeah guys that marks the end of this podcast thank you so much for listening whoa 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. oh slowly, slowly, i forgot slowly, slowly i forgot the most important piece yep. i'm like trying to rush out i'm like our time is up okay <laughs> this girl hungry <laughs> <laughs> no I actually i'm food. hungry for real okay you ask the question first then all right avriel muse why am I your muse this week? You're my muse this week because you made a lot of money this week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking, guys. She's not joking. I'm joking. Stop. That, that makes you sound. That digger. makes you sound like a gold digger. She ain't you ain't messing with no, no bro, bro. bro. Hey. Okay. No, for real. <laughs> He's my muse because you were actually talking about gifted hands music in this podcast, so I feel like this is just perfect alignment. Okay. You're my muse because back in 2019. You had the vision for this business. It was nothing. It was actually nothing. It was just an idea. And what, five years later, it's afforded you the ability to be able to make five figures in one week. Yeah. And if you never yeah, took man. a chance on that business, first of all, what, what would you even be doing? One, probably like, I was going to say selling drugs, so I know you wouldn't sell drugs. <laughs> I was only saying that because Elijah used to sell drugs back in the day. That was, that was a different podcast. That was, we're, 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 we're past, we're past that. That. Was that was a different before, episode. That, that was, was before episode. he knew the Lord and all that, whatever. But I'm like, I just don't know what you'd be doing. I'm sure you would have found something that would have been successful, but I'm basically trying to say the success that you have today is actually because of your mind and your vision and I just love that you're such a visionary because you envisioned this thing that was just a small seed and you never assigned difficulty to it. Like, that's what I love about you. I will see something and I'll be like, that's hard. Oh my gosh. And then I'll think about all the reasons why it's probably too hard for me to do it. And you'll see something and you're like, I'm going to do it. You don't assign whether it's going to be hard, easy, whatever. You just move forward. And yeah. I just love that. That's just how you are. And it's huh. so inspiring to me. I appreciate that, babe. I've never heard anybody say that. You don't assign difficulty to things. I like the way that sounds. Yeah. All right, babe. So why am I your muse this week? So you are my muse this week because you are a living example of what it means to break ceilings. I think throughout our marriage, whether they be self-built, <laughs> <laughs> self-placed ceilings, or real life siblings, you continuously find ways around them or through them. So good. You know, and you continuously remove the limits that have been placed on you and you exceed your own expectations, you exceed others' expectations, and you just keep leveling up. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I love that. And it's funny because a lot of the time they are ceilings I created myself, yeah, you yeah. know? But that's the crazy thing about mindset is that it's so powerful that it actually acts as if it's a real ceiling yeah. in your life. So yeah. this is why we have this podcast, guys, because we want to keep it real with you. We want to make sure that you guys are breaking out of the ceilings because there's so much for your life. And 100%. God has called you to so much. And you need to actually see that yeah. so that you can obtain all that he has for you. 
So thank you guys so much for watching if you're watching and thank you so much for listening. Wherever you're listening to our podcast, please just make sure that you download rate, it, review, share it, review, download, it, it, share it. Send it to your auntie, your yes, uncle, your cousin and subscribe if you're on YouTube. Just do all Send of it the to your things. Your stepdad, your stepmom, all of them. Exactly. And And come back next week. Because we got another episode dropping next week. Period. Okay. So thank you guys. Bye. Peace.